important plant that they bring to us. It is called the milkweed. You're getting four pieces. And the reason this is the most important is because it is the only home and food for the monarch butterfly and for many butterflies. And as you can see there on your screen, they are majestic and beautiful and we are about to lose them. And that would be devastating. In fact, I, in the, I just heard recently, in the past like few years, we've lost, we're, we've lost like 80% of them. So this is a way that all of us can do our part. I mean, they're beautiful, it's a beautiful plant, but we can do our part in allowing them to have a home and to have the food that they need and to keep them going. Um, and it, you don't have to have a huge garden. In fact, these you can plant in containers. So even if you're in um, you know, a place where you have a balcony, you can have them. Uh, they're winter hardy, so in places where you couldn't have them before, maybe if it got too cold, you can have these as well. So let's all do our part. You're getting four pieces. You're saving almost $6 and getting them home for just about $7 on easy pay, shipping to you for free. M82017 is your item number. They'll be shipped to you as four actively growing plants in six and a half inch pots, and you'll get one each of orange, pink, yellow, and white. Um, Stephanie, I know this is very, you're very passionate about this. Um, yes. And when we were talking earlier, I didn't realize it had gotten as bad as it had with the monarchs. Yeah, you know, for various reasons, the native milkweed or Asclepias that we have growing in North America has um, really started to just be extinct almost. Therefore, the monarch butterflies really don't have any food or a home for them to to fly to um, during their migration. And so truly, like you mentioned, Terry, this is by far the most important plant that we ever bring to QVC, and it is definitely like your good deed of the year if you plant this milkweed because you will truly be helping save the monarch butterfly population. And why it's so important, you know, this is the one plant that the monarch butterfly, like you see here, the one plant that she's going to go and lay her eggs on the leaves, and then once they hatch into the caterpillar, which that photo of the caterpillar is actually from my personal plant, I'm um, at my home in California, and I have to tell you, Terry, I had upwards of like 50 caterpillars at one time. What? I quickly realized I did not have enough milkweed for them. I tried to go to the local nursery. They were all sold out. So, you know, pick up a couple of these collections. You can never have enough of this milkweed, not, not only for yourself, because like you mentioned, they are beautiful flowers, but truly you are providing a home and a, and a feast for the monarch butterfly. And then once those caterpillars eat all the leaves that they need, they're gonna go into their chrysalis and then emerge into those beautiful monarch butterflies. And um, you know, it's really beautiful just to be able to share that story with your kids, maybe your nieces and nephews. I remember speaking with Carolyn Gracie once and she mentioned, you know, give a collection to your kid's science teacher, for example, and be able to you know, go through that whole life cycle Ugh. together as a class. People um, order a, them. I mean, you, it's classes order them sometimes and then they're sent to them. I know that our very own Sandra Bennett had her mm -hmm. own experience and her husband took a video of the whole yep. process. Let's there watch that. He did a time-lapse video. It, it's absolutely beautiful. I know she did this with her family. And then, you know, just to be able to share one of Mother Nature's most beautiful kind of life wow. cycle stories with your loved ones to be able to teach them what it is to be, you know, reborn and then watch the caterpillar transform into this beautiful monarch butterfly. It's absolutely unbeatable, um, an, an unbeatable experience to share with them. And on top of that, you're doing a really wonderful deed. Mm -hmm. I mean, like you mentioned, over the last two decades, Terry, the, the monarch butterfly population has gone down upwards of 80%. And that's just because, like I mentioned, their native uh, milkweed, the, the milkweed that they're used to finding in the woods and, and out in nature has just really kind of like doesn't exist anymore for various reasons. And so by planting this, I promise you that when the monarchs are out on their migration, they have like these special goggles and they are looking for one plant in the whole world. And it is this milkweed. And if you have it in your garden, even if you live, you know, on a, in a, 20 story apartment complex and you just have a balcony, maybe it's even more important that you plant it so that the monarchs have somewhere to stop there. Mm -hmm. You know, you can grow these in containers directly in the ground. Um, if you live 
just south of the Canadian border where it gets very cold. No worries because it's one of the most winter hardy uh, perennials that we have. So truly every single one of us in the U.S. can be planting this and therefore helping the monarch butterfly po population, you know, remerge and come back into healthy numbers. Fewer than 2,000 remain. This is very popular. I have a question about where these should go, and our producer has a question about this. Does it need sun or shade? Because we both have kids, and we both yep. want these. So I have to run over to QVC1. Will you address those? And then um, I so would love the to. sun or shade, and where do we plant these? Thank you so yep. much, Stephanie. Good to see you. Thank you, Terry. Well, you know, the Asclepias or the milkweed is a sun-loving perennial. So give it as much sun as possible. Six to eight hours a day is probably ideal. And you can plant this really anywhere in the garden. Um, it's a true, it's very versatile. It's native to the U.S. or to North America, I should correct myself, which means you can just rest assured that it's going to grow easily anywhere in your yard. Um, I love to plant it where you're going to be able to see them. You know, maybe pick up two collections plant one collection in containers and put them out where you're gonna be entertaining and you're gonna be spending a lot of time in the summertime. And then maybe grab another collection and plant it towards the end of your property and just let that be kind of a, a little refuge for the monarch butterflies. Um, but I wanted to mention, every single one of our plants comes with a growing guide. So if for whatever reason, you have a question and you don't remember, you can just refer to this. My brother handwrites all of them and they're chock full of good information. And um, his so, handwriting you know, is so neat. Yeah. You it's so neat, you said? You, yeah, you didn't know I was up yet, did you? I didn't know you were up, Dan, but it's really good to see you. I, I'm interrupting. Terry is on her way over to, to QVC1. Uh, I want to make two comments. Okay. This, to me, out of all the, the hundreds and hundreds of different plants that you bring to us and have now for, you know, decades, mm -hmm. I find this to be the singularly most important plant that people can put in their backyards because Absolutely. it's impact gardening. And it feels so good when you see your first monarch butterfly in your own backyard, knowing that you're helping to perpetuate the entire species. Plus, right. and I hope I, this is okay to say, normally milkweed or escapia is not an attractive plant. That's it's why not. this was so cool that you were able to hybridize them so that mm -hmm. now, now they're beautiful. That's right, now they're beautiful and you're gonna enjoy them yourself and the monarch butterflies are going to enjoy them. Was that Eric I heard in the background barking? No, that was my dog, Bernie. <laughs> okay. Uh, Stephanie, it is always a pleasure to have you on the network. I can't wait to work with you in my own program, which is coming up in just a few moments. I'll see you have soon. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. Thanks, Dan. That's a good human being right there. All right, are we just gonna jump into it? <clears throat> what do you say, Jen? Okay, we're gonna take a little break. I'm exhausted, I've worked for seconds. Uh, I'm coming back. We've got three hours on a Monday. The Great Outdoors with Dan ahead.